I've never made a fist build before, so to prepare for the DLC, I thought, hey, why not ball out with my fists? Grab some iron balls and swing them around. For stance damage, obviously, to knock down enemies and follow up with critical hits. Let's go! Let me know what other builds you'd like to see updated in this little DLC prep series below. So I did mention the iron ball in the intro, but for the most part, we're using the star fist in this build. You can use either one and we'll talk about the differences in a little bit. But firstly, let's talk about what's changed since launch. And one of the things that's changed is that the fist weapons have seen some pretty decent buffs in patch 1.08. The speed of some of their attacks was increased as well as the recovery time has also been reduced. Now, we're comboing this with the Ashapore Crag Blade, which has had several changes since launch to actually make it a feasible weapon art, whereas at launch, it really wasn't that good. So the Crag Blade Ashapore received a massive buff in patch 1.07, lasting 60 seconds rather than 30, increasing its attack power buff by 15% and its stamina attack power by 50% and its stance damage buff by 20%. This was slightly nerfed in patch 1.08, bringing the stance damage buff back down to 10%, which even still is quite good, especially now that it lasts 60 seconds. So bringing this build together, now as I mentioned, I've done a few of like the larger typical strength-based builds where you grab a big old weapon and you swing it around, and I wanted to do something different for these DLC prep videos, and that's where the idea for this build came from, especially now that the Crag Blade Ash of War is quite strong. So without a build that is sort of strength only, it doesn't really use any faith, or it does a tiny little bit, no real deck or arcane or intelligence what have you just a pure basically strength and vigor build in a more fast paced style of play rather than the typical slower paced where we've still got all the benefits of the strength build being that you know you've got a ton of poise so you can tank hits we're going to be dealing a ton of stagger damage so you can follow up with those critical hits but your attack patterns are much faster and easier to weave in and out of enemy attacks, especially some of those later bosses, compared to, say, you know, your typical strength weapon where you've just got the big old stick and you're swinging it around. And, and the, the flow is a little bit different. That's what I wanted to sort of focus on for this build and why we're using this specific weapon plus the Crag Blade Ash of War. So your primary stats for this build are strength and vigor. You'll definitely want to be maxing those out. You probably want around 50 vigor, especially if you're taking this straight into the DLC, and then as much strength as you can pump with a a little bit of dex to hit minimum requirements or once you've pumped your strength enough plus some mind so we can get some of these effects and some of the buffs that we're using off as well and 15 faith for flame grant me strength and bestial vitality more on that in a little bit so the equipment for this build is going to be the star fist or the iron blade really you can use either one the damage here is essentially the same for either it's slightly better on star fist and the star fist also does blood loss build up so that's why i've chosen to go that for this build however it really doesn't matter you can use either one you probably won't be triggering that blood loss heaps it's more of like a nice surprise when it does actually go off because it doesn't happen that often because of the way that we're attacking in combat because we're using a lot of charge attacks or jump attacks we're not focusing so much on you know using the light attack combos to trigger these status effects fast it's not the core focus of this build but it's just like a nice benefit that you get that blood loss effect off occasionally for your armor you can wear anything that has the highest amount of poise possible while still maintaining your medium roll which you absolutely need to because we have no other forms of avoiding damage here other than the iframes of the medium roll so the highest poise damage you can get which is also why you want to put a lot of points into endurance which i did forget to mention earlier my bad so that you got that higher equip load so that you can actually medium roll for your talismans the dragon crest talisman is obviously fantastic to further negate some of that physical damage because you can just tank hits with this build because of our high health pool because of our high poise so you can still attack while being attacked so having that to reduce some of that more physical damage is obviously great the winged sword insignia or the rotten wing sword insignia is fantastic fantastic here to greatly raise your attack power from successive attacks when we do do those combos and if you can avoid some of that damage with the iframes coming towards you. The Ur Tree's favor is pretty solid here to increase your overall HP, your stamina and especially your equip load. Obviously the plus two version here is better to further increase those benefits but definitely helps to try and stay in medium load while equipping some of the heavier armor like the bull goat armor that we're wearing in this video and the claw talisman to enhance your jump attacks because you will use jump attacks a lot here to close the distance because of how small and tiny our little weapons are so it helps you get into that range you can switch
switch this out to say something like the Axe Talisman to enhance your charged attacks, like if you're charging up your R2, that's totally fine. Or Radagon Seal is like an alternative to the Erdtree's Favor, but this is sort of the general setup that I've gone with. For your Ash of War and your spells, we've already talked about the Crag Blade, which is the main one here. This does come from Kaelid down near the bridge if you wanted to go and grab this if you haven't got it. It's sort of tricky to find it. You don't really come across it just in like general gameplay. Now the spells here, we are using a couple with that tiny little bit of like 15 faith and we are using the claw mark seal here because you don't really need much actual faith to actually use that so the flame grant me strength we're using for the physical attack power bonus that you do get from that i also like bestial vitality here like you may as well use it considering you've got enough faith for it at 15 so that little bit of hp regen you can't really go wrong there the other bestial incantations i also would recommend running at least one or two because we don't really have any range otherwise with this build like stone of garak i like using here in this build to give you some range so you can pull enemies when they're away from you or you know just in certain boss fights where maybe you don't want to get too close it does give you an option in those encounters whereas with this fist weapon you don't really have it otherwise and that leads us directly into like our build tips here and essentially that first one is really about the very short range like your movement in this build is going to be the most critical thing because you have this great weapon that does a fair amount of stance damage so you can do those critical hits the jump attacks here or just general attacking does do fantastic damage especially once you've got all these buffs triggered but the downside is that very short range and a lot of enemies especially some of the late game bosses you don't really want to be super close to them in some regards especially when they have a lot of those like high rapid attacks that they deal very quickly so jump attacks to really help you close that distance and then sprinting away is a good combo the claw talisman can help you increase that jump attack damage i also like i'm always been a fan of the spirit summons as well but you can definitely use them here especially like the mimic tier can be helpful to pull some of that aggro away from you especially on those like heavy hitting sort of late game bosses you can then have them attack that while you can then focus on using those jump attacks and dealing that stance damage to then follow up with your critical hits all sort of fantastic combos that you can do with this build also wouldn't be afraid of just using your normal like light attacks right some enemies and some bosses don't really allow you to build up a charge attack or deal certain types of attacks so if you can just get those quick light attacks off in between their combos completely nothing wrong with that crag blades benefit to stance damage will still see you knock them down to follow up with that critical hit at some point as well before any encounter you obviously want to be using these buffs right like you want to be using flame get me strength bestial vitality and the crag blade on your weapon then walk into those encounters with all of those buffs active speaking of those buffs you've also got the crystal tears as well now when you're looking at your physique flask here the strength knot crystal tier is probably the main one that you'll use stone barb can definitely go in that second slot to make it temporarily easier to break enemy stances and that's obviously for, perfect for this build green burst crystal tier isn't bad either for that stamina recovery which can definitely help you in this build or you know something else if you want to avoid your damage negation from one of the other tiers that's entirely up to you for your great rune radan's great rune is probably the one you want here because it increases your max hp fp and stamina all great things for this build you can use godric's great rune as well like this can't go wrong with just raising all your attributes like that's completely fine too but you know Radan's rune makes the most sense here, but either of them is fine. But let me know what you think of this different strength build in the comments down below, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.